Σας ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ που είσαστε εδώ σήμερα, ασχέτως αν είναι ήδη αρκετά ή αρκετούς. Στη σημερινή διάλεξη έχουμε την ιδιαίτερη τιμή να φιλοξενούμε μια καταξιωμένη αρχαιολόγο και ερευνήτρια της Αιγιακής και Δήμη Νοϊκής Αρχαιολογίας, τη δόκτωρ Νικολέτα Μομιλιάνο, για τον υποφαινόμενο «Δε είναι διπλή η χαρά», καθώς η Νικολέτα Μομιλιάνο υπήρξε η επιβλέπουσα καθηγήτρια της διδακτορικής του διατριβής. Η Νικολέτα Μομιλιάνο είναι, μια, είναι αναπληρώτη καθηγήτρια στο Πανεπιστήμιο του Μπρίστολ, μια κάματη ερευνήτρια με αστήρευτο και εξουζήλευτο πάθος για την αρχαιολογία και με πλουσιότατο συγγραφικό έργο. Από τα πιο γνωστά τελευταία της έργα είναι το Gnosos Pottery Handbook, ένα βιβλίο οδηγό για τη μηνοϊκή κεραμική και σε συνεργασία με τον Γιάννη Χαμελάκη, το Archaeology and European Modernity, Producing and Consuming the Minoans. Το τελευταίο μάλιστα μεταφράστηκε και στα ελληνικά ως αρχαιολογία και ευρωπαϊκή νοτερικότητα, παράγοντας και καταναλώνοντας τους μινοίτες. Τα δύο τελευταία χρόνια συνεργάζεται με τη Γαλλική Αρχαιολογική Σχολή στη διοργάνωση συνεδρίων. Το Κρητομάνια έλαβε χώρα πέρσι, ενώ το συνέδριο Χελενομάνια διοργανώθηκε μόλις σήμερα, καθώς και αύριο, εφόσον αν θέλετε να πάτε. Η σημερινή διάλεξη με τίτλο «Ιάσος and Minoanization» «Ιασός και εκμινο... εκ... Εκ... εκμινοισμός» εστιάζει όχι μόνο στις ανασκαφές που διεξήγαγαν ο Ντόρο Λέβη και η Κλέλια Λαβιόζα στις δεκαετίες του 1960 και του 1970 στην Ιασό στα παράλια της Μικράς Ασίας, αλλά και στον ιδιόμορφο όρο «εκμινοισμός» που ταλανίζει εδώ και δεκαετίες στη μινοϊκή αρχαιολογία. Τα αποτελέσματα των ανασκαφών δημοσίευσε η σημερινή ομιλήτρια το 2012 με το βιβλίο Bronze Age, Carian Iasos. Θα θέλαμε να ευχαριστήσουμε θερμά την Νικολέτα, η οποία παρόλο το χθεσινό ταξίδι, το σημερινό ολοήμερο συνέδριο, έχει ακόμα τη δύναμη και το κουράγιο για να μας παραδώσει τη σημερινή διάλεξη. Νι Νικολέτα, καλώς όρισες. Πρώτα απ' όλα, συγγνώμη, γιατί θα αρχίσουμε μία ώρα αργότερα. Δεν φταίω εγώ, φταίει ο Αλεξάνδρ Φαρνού, ο οποίο δεν είναι εδώ, πιστεύω. Ναι, φταίει αυτό. Δεν θα, συγγνώμη, δεν θα μιλήσω ελληνικά. Uh, I hope you will forgive me if I continue in English. That means that we will finish more quickly. And of course, I would like first of all to thank the Aegeus Societies for inviting me to talk about my work at the site of Jansos and, of course, the Swedish Institute for hosting this. And again, apologies for starting one hour later than usual. Um, I'm going to talk about Jansos and minoanization. And let's start with minoanization, because this is a very interesting term. And as summarized by Cyprian Brutbank in a seminal article that he published now a decade ago, this is a modern term of deceptive convenience used for a heterogeneous range of ancient material cultural traits and practices that indicate the adoptions of places beyond Crete through whatever means of ways of doing things that originated directly or indirectly within that island. In other words, minoanization is a term used to describe the discovery of material culture from pottery to frescoes, from linear inscriptions to technology and cultic practices, which ultimately originated from Crete. And while, of course, everybody agrees on the remarkable presence of a wide range of minoan cultural traits outside Crete, and on variable degrees of minoanization, what have been and continue to be controversial are the different theories concerning the actual processes that created this archaeological record. Now, as far as I was able to ascertain, the term minoanization was used for the first time by John Pendlebury in his 1939 volume, The Archaeology of Crete, as illustrated in this slide. And as also as implied in the passage, Pendlebury hinted at 
two main theories that had been used to explain the presence of Minoan trades on mainland Greece. The, the, the passage uh, deals actually with the finds in mainland Greece. And the first theory was that the Cretan-Greek mainland relationship mirrored that between ancient Etruria and Attica in later times, with mainland Greek merely adopting the trappings of a higher civilization. Uh, Malcolm Wheeler and others, of course, would use the term a kind of Versailles effect. The second, that is the other theory, which is the one shown in this slide, would regard the minorization of mainland Greece as too pronounced to be the result of mere influence. In other words, Pendlebury supported Sir Arthur Evans's idea of a wholesale military conquest of mainland Greece and of a Minoan aristocracy or Minoan empire. Both theories are still well alive today and although, as one would expect, since the 1930s, they have considerably evolved and have also been joined by new theories and approaches, such as world system theory and network theories, to which I shall come back later. Indeed, the subject of minoranization has received continuous attention since Sir Arthur Evans' time, not only because of the elaboration of new theories and approaches, but also because of spectacular new discoveries at many sites, some very well known, such as Acrotiri on Santorini, Aguirini on Caer, Triandi on Rhodes, Miletus in Turkey, and some perhaps not so well known, such as Yasos, Teixusa, Tarshan Adase, on the western coast of Asia Minor. But also these small sites show intriguing evidence of interaction with the Minoan world. Although I shall refer to other sites as well, today my talk will focus on the work I conducted at Yassos as co-director of the Baci project, co-director with Mario Benzi and uh, Paolo Benni. And this was a project that aimed at the publication of the Bronze Age structures and finds discovered during the excavations conducted by Italian archaeologists in the late 1960s and early 1980s, or rather from the 1960s to the 1980s, but had never been systematically studied and published until recently. So my talk is going to be structured as follows, so you can realize when I'm getting near the end, um, remind, first of all, I want to remind you very briefly of the location of Yasos and a few basic facts about the site. Second, I want to have a brief discussion of the early history of archaeological <coughs> explorations in Caria, and this is because I want to contextualize the first excavator's interpretation of the site, that is of Doro Levi and Clevia Laviosa, who started work there in the 1960s. Third, um, I want to discuss uh, the main results of my uh, work at Yassos, especially on pottery. And fourth, I want to look at the significance, I want to conclude with a few words on the significance of this work in the context of minoranization. So let's start with a brief, uh, showing you a few slides about um, Yassos. Some of you, some people in this room are very familiar with the site, but perhaps some of you have never been there. Yasus, uh, is there a point? Uh, um, the, no, well, but probably it's, it's quite clear anyhow. Um, it's located on a small promontory that was probably originally an island at the head of the Gulf of Gulluk, also called the Gulf of Mandalia. And as you can see from these slides, it's basically halfway between Miletus to the north and Bodrum, ancient Alcarnassos, to the south. This is a region, of course, known since antiquity as Caria. And I would like to remind you that actually the Gulf of Mandalia is relatively deep. It's about 20 kilometers from the tip of the, Gulf, uh, of the Bodrum Peninsula. So reaching Yassos, it does involve, if you like, a small detour. If, say, somebody is traveling from Rhodes or Kos to the south, 
and going towards Samos, going further north, say towards Troy. The promontory island where Jansos is situated covers approximately 26 hectares and the Bronze Age site covered probably an area between, let's say, a minimum of 6.5 hectares to a maximum of 20 hectares. That is, we are talking of kind of middle ranking site in terms of its size for this area of the Aegean. So, a fairly substantial middle ranking site and of course a multi-period site because its occupation history spans several millennia, uh, probably from as early as the Neolithic period and most certainly from the late Chalcolithic, early Bronze Age, down to present times, although with some possible gaps in this very long sequence. Its most visible monuments belong to the Hellenistic, Roman and Byzantine periods, as you can see in this slide. But if you do visit Yassos, you can also see some Bronze Age uh, remains in the area of the later Roman Agora. And if you know where to look, you can also find the very, very thick la layer of Tefra from Santorini, from the Bronze Age eruption of Santorini. This is found in the middle of the Roman Agora. This is, um, the, these are the um, late geometric tombs which sit directly on top of the um, Bronze Age walls, unfortunately. And here is the, uh, this is a Byzantine, um, uh, late Roman Byzantine paved area. And right there is the tephra. But why did Italian archaeologists start digging at Yassos in the 1960s? Now, the history of Italian archaeological investigations abroad has often been intertwined with political developments, and Yassos is no exception. The earliest interest and the explorations in Asia Minor by Italian archaeologists developed in the intellectual and political <coughs> climate of the late 19th and early 20th century. This was a time in which the imperialist and colonial aspiration of the European nation states, including the relatively early, uh, relatively uh, late comer, uh, the Italian uh, kingdom, I mean, late Camer, of course, compared to uh, France, and King, uh, England, and so on. Um, but anyhow, when the colonial aspiration of the um, European uh, nation states were, if you like, in counterpoint with the uh, gradual decline of the Ottoman Empire, it was also a time in which archaeology was one of the facets, one of the elements in the competition among Western nations for prestige and power. And Italian colonial aspirations in this period did involve uh, Asia Minor, but they did not bring any substantial fruits in this area, except for a very brief occupation of Antalya just after the First World War. But the new, the colonial aspiration of the new Italian state, however, as you know very well, resulted in the Italian occupation of the Dodecanese, an occupation that lasted from 1912 until 1943, and resulted in the creation of the Italian archaeological mission in Rhodes. And this, the creation of the um, Italian mission in Rhodes, um, facilitated the continuation of Italian archaeological interests in Asia Minor, as illustrated, for example, by the, by the joint expeditions to Caria 
conducted by the Italian Archaeological School in Athens and the Italian Archaeological Mission in Rhodes in 1921 and 1922, led by Alessandro della Seta, the then director, um, with visits that included a visit to Yassos in 1921 and even the excavation of a geometric cemetery in the Bodrum Peninsula near Alicarnassos in 1922, in which Doro Levi actually took part. <coughs> and Della Seta, who was then director, as I said, of the Italian Archaeological School in Athens, explained in various publication reports of this period that he was particularly keen to promote a systematic exploration of Caria because he thought that this could throw some light on the rise and fall of Minoan civilization. And this was because of the proximity of Caria to Crete through the bridge provided by the islands of Cassos, Carpathos, and Rhodes, and also because of the intriguing close relationship uh, between Carians and Cretans mentioned in ancient Greek authors, such as Herodotus, Thucydides, and Strabo. And all these ideas formed the intellectual springboard for Levy's later excavations. During these early explorations, the Italian archaeologists obtained permissions to start excavations in Caria, but 1923, the uh, Turkish nationalist movement, led by Mustafa Kemal, of course, put a stop to further in investigations in Asia Minor in the 1920s by other Italian or, of course, other archaeological ex expeditions. So it was only after the Second World War that Doro Levi, who by then had succeeded De La Seta as director of the Italian Archaeological School in Athens, only then was he able to revive Italian interest in the Carian region. And in 1955, Levi visited various sites and decided to excavate at Yassos because, following exactly in Della Seta's footsteps, he believed that this site could shed some light upon the relationship between Caria and the prehistoric Aegean, and especially on the issue of the Minoan Thalassocracy. But of course, he started the excavations only in 1960 because Festos happened in the meantime. In this slide, you can see a plan of uh, the site and Levy, Doro Levy, with the members of his team in a photo taken in 1962, which includes Clelia. Uh, Laviosa, who then succeeded Levy as director in Yassos in the 1970s. And as early as the first week of the very first excavation season in <coughs> Yassos in 1960, in a trench located near the south corner of the later Greek theatre, Levy reported the discovery of Minoan and Mycenaean pottery. And in the following two decades, Levy and Laviosa discovered Bronze Age material at various spots over the peninsula, that are shown on that map, and also on the mainland. On the mainland, however, the Bronze Age finds seem to be limited to the early Bronze Age necropolis, um, whereas on the, near the isthmus and in other areas of the island, of the peninsula, they cover most phases of the Bronze Age. And the most important finds uh, relative to the Bronze Age, and especially to the issue of minorization, actually come from the area of the later Roman Agora, which again you can see better in this slide, the area of the Roman Agora, and this is the test. Um, actually, it, the excavation in this area started in 1967 in a trench that measured two by two meters, and um, it's a, by the, a trench that was located by the west portico of the um, Agora, and by the 1980s, uh, this plan, the ten, trench uh, covered an area of about 800 square meters. 
And in this area, Levy and La Viosa discovered some Mycenaean pottery at first, and a good number of minon and minonizing ceramics, and even a structure uh, called Building F, which showed, according to them, according to other archaeologists too, some minon traits. Now, given the premises, if you like, of the Italian enterprise, the intellectual climate in which Levi and La Viosa themselves grew up, their educational and professional backgrounds, I think it was almost inevi inevitable that both archaeologists would provide a very colonialist interpretation of their finds. And this quotation from a paper by La Viosa will be will suffice to illustrate this point. He said here, Yazos was quite a large settlement already in the Middle Bronze Age, showing a developed urbanization to be attributed to minor colonists. We are sure that Yazos cannot be an isolated settlement and that progress of excavations along the coast of Western Turkey will produce in the future new important discoveries of similar minor colonies or emporia. Now, what was particularly surprising about Levis and Laviosa's claim at that time was the suggestion that this minor colonization was quite early, dating to the period, effectively, of the, fir of the first minor palaces, something that made Yasos almost unique in the Aegean, the only other case, of course, being Castrium Kithira, which, in fact, uh, has even older evidence. The evidence from Levis and Laviosa's claim was the alleged discovery of several fragments of pottery described as imports and local productions of minor Camares pottery. They, they described it as such in their preliminary reports. And of course, given the fact that in the 1950s, just before digging at Yassos, both Levi and Laviosa had conducted their well-known excavations at the Minoan Palace of Festos. Their claim had, of course, considerable authority. Now, as I've just mentioned, Levi and Laviosa published only some preliminary reports, but no comprehensive and systematic study of the Bronze Age levels excavated by them was undertaken until 1998. That is, when Clelia Laviosa invited me and other colleagues, Mario Benzi and Paolo Belli, to collaborate on this enterprise. And La Viosa, unfortunately, died a year later, but the research program on Bronze Age Yassos continued. And I will now move on to the third part, or perhaps the most substantial part of my talk, and show you some of the results of this systematic work on Bronze Age Yassos. I shall um, discuss the evidence in chronological order, but before I do so, I must warn you, the finds from Yassos are really smashed up because of later building activity, especially in the Greek, Roman and Byzantine period. These have really seriously damaged the Bronze Age levels. Sometimes pieces of one vase can be found in Bronze Age levels, sometimes another piece can be in the archaic, geometric, later levels. And pot shirts can be very, very tiny and very worn. Sometimes they've been in the water for a couple of millennia. In other words, to cut a long story short, they look like dog biscuits most of the time. So, but there they are. Now, proceeding in chronological fashion, I'll start with the earliest evidence for direct or indirect um, contacts between Yasus and Minoan Crete. For the early Bronze Age, uh, well, we have plenty of early Bronze Age uh, at Yasus, but there is no evidence alleged or otherwise of contacts um, with Crete. Concerning the Middle Bronze Age, or protopalatial period in Cretan terms, all of Levis, Laviosa's, Camares, and Camares imitation pottery turned out to be something totally different, or quite different. That is the later Southeast Aegean light on dark ware of the Neopalatial period, of which some examples are illustrated in this slide. And we know that one center of production for this was the island of Kos 
I'll say a bit more about this pottery uh, later. During, our, during my re-examination of all the pottery excavated by Levi and La Viosa, I did discover three fragments that might date in my known terms to the protopalatial period, or rather one is certainly uh, protopalatial, and the other two vessels could be late uh, protopalatial or perhaps even early neopalatial. The vessel that is clearly uh, protopalatial is the, the one on your right, um, which is a jar that is clearly, it, it, it's also proven by microscopic but also uh, by petrographic analysis that it's, um, uh, it's handmade also, so typical protopalatial and it's from the Messara. The analysis show that it's from the Messara. The other two vessels, and these other two tiny fragments, well, they're really, really small, and they could date to MM2B, but they could also be as late as uh, MM3A or even MM3B. And uh, the petrographic analysis of these white spotted fragments is not very uh, conclusive. It is clear that they're not local, but, and it's clear that the fabric could be compatible with North Central Crete, but it's not as clear <coughs> as the analysis done on the other, uh, on the jar. So the study of the old excavations at Yassos, in fact, basically revealed that no clear levels contemporary with the protopalatial periods were ever excavated on the site. All these three sherds and also other Anatolian uh, type pottery that can be dated on stylistic grounds to the Middle Bronze Age period, all these were found in later level, in levels datable between Middle Minoan 3b and late Minoan 1a, one possibly late Minoan 1b level. But so to sum up, the three Minoan fragments are the Middle Bronze Age Anatolian material provide, yes, they provide tantalizing evidence for the existence of Middle Bronze Age levels, levels that could be equivalent to, to the protopalatial period, but clearly they are not enough to suggest the presence of Minoan colonists at Yassos in the period of the old palaces on Crete and creating this urbanized uh, settlement. As had, already, as had originally been suggested by Levi and Laviosa. If we move to the neopalatial period, for this period, the evidence for contacts and interaction between Yassos and the Minoan world is much more abundant, especially in the phases up to the Santorini eruption in late Minoan 1A. And by Minoan world, I mean, of course, Crete, but also other sites in the Aegean, such as Miletus and Rhodes, that were very heavily Minoanized. And for the neopalatial period, the evidence for the Minoanization of Yasus comes from one architecture, two from Potter's marks in uh, linear A. You can see one in this slide on the right. Possibly stone objects. Um, and last but not least, pottery, which provide the most abundant and better studied data. And although I'm very happy to answer questions about architecture, potter's marks, and stone vases, in the remaining time I wish to concentrate on pottery, partly because I don't want to keep you for too long, and also because I think the pottery provides arguably the most interesting evidence. And for the pottery, um, well, we have a number of types. We can divide it uh, in various types that provide evidence for minoanization, but also for something else. So we have, first, minoan imports from Crete. Second, we have locally made well, I would call, I would use the term minoanizing for things made with proper minoan templates, but with local clays. We have imports of minoanizing pottery from other areas of the Aegean, from the Kos Bodrum Peninsula, from Rhodes, from Miletus, and also from unidentified areas of the Aegean. 
Four, we have some interesting hybrids. For example, we have one Anatol some Anatolian pots that make use of some Minoan elements. We have also imports of Anatolian type pottery from Miletus and from the Kos Bodrum region. Uh, we have imports from Rhodes of what seems to be a kind of uh, local kind type of pottery. And then we have Cycladic type pottery made in the Kos Bodrum area and also some perhaps made in Yasser. I wasn't sure whether I should put this, but why not? <laughs> Obviously, most of the pottery that we find at Yassos is of state Anatolian type. And now I'll try and show you uh, examples of all these categories, although not necessarily all in the exact order indicated in this slide. And I will conclude with some observations on how this material could be interpreted, could perhaps throw some light on the complex phenomenon of minoanization. Starting with minoan imports, these amount to the max total maximum I fa we found was 32 pots out of a total assemblage of six, about 16,000 pot shards. And this is I mean, I'm showing you only a few, but this is all, all we have because to spot Italian, uh, to spot Cretan imports, it's quite easy. Um, the fabric, the local fabric is so different. Um, and these are fragments that are certainly or likely Cretan provenance as indicated by microscopic observation and usually also corroborated by petrographic and Quem scan analysis. And these 32 pots cover, as you can see also from this slide, a wide range of shapes from <coughs> small, fine breathing cups decorated with ripples and spirals in a fine buff fabric typical of North Central Crete. We have also middle sized jars or jugs, and even, as you can see, proper pithoi. And the provenance of, uh, within Crete of these imports is also varied. We have imports from probably the Knossos area. We have imports from the Messera. We have imports that we can say that it probably are generally from some kind of southern area in Crete, somewhere between the Messera and uh, Myrtos Pyrgos. And looking at this, I thought, well, for me, two questions sort of um, springs to mind when I think of this kind of uh, um, provinces. One, is this variety of origins within Crete evidence of what some people would like to see as factions, uh, different local elites competing in some inter-island exchanges? Or was this trade channeled via some great hub, uh, a center such as Knossos, or perhaps via some other um, important center, such as Catosacro or Palecastro. To answer this question properly, I would like to have more information from Zacro and also from Palecastro. But at the moment, I tend to prefer the idea of Knossos acting as an important hub, because although of course, Zacro and Palecastro are much closer to Rhodes, to uh, Kos, uh, and, and so on. These centers do not seem to have yielded any imports from Anatolia or even from, the, uh, from Kos. While at Knossos, we have imports certainly from Rhodes and from Kos. And also, we don't seem to find in, in Yasos, in Anatolia, import from Zacro and from Palekastron. 
So what I'm trying to say is if Zacro and Palekastro, which I would like would be in, to be, if they had been independent emporia in the exchange networks that linked Crete with the Eastern Aegean and with Anatolia, why don't we have so far much evidence of Rhodian and Khan imports at this Anatolian site? Why don't we find similar imports at Palakers? But we find imports from Rhodes, we find imports from Kos at Knossos. Of course, other people may have different opinions on this, and I'd be delighted to, um, if somebody had uh, different uh, suggestions about this. The other question that, of course, sprang to my mind when I saw these imports is, did this Cretan import, did they come to Yansos more or less directly from Knossos, or did they arrive via other minorized centers, such as Trianda on Rhodes, Serraglio on Kos, or indeed Miletus? Again, I'd love to have more data from all of these uh, sites that I've mentioned, but I favor the idea that at least some Cretan material came to Yansos largely via these other centers. Because at Yassos we have plenty of imports also from these areas. Indeed, Kos and Miletus, our closest neighbors, are the, source, are the sources of our largest number of imports at Yassos. Here I'm showing you actually um, two of the categories I mentioned in my um, previous slides, namely categories two and three. Here you have some minorizing pottery made at Yassos and also imports of minorizing pottery from other centers. In this case we have a conical cup. I think uh, Wolf will recognize it. That it's clearly from Miletus and one that uh, um, the analysis of the clay showed was probably from Kos or from an area with volcanic uh, that would give, yield volcanic um, inclusions. And most, indeed, most of the uh, minorizing pottery found at Yassos consist of conical cups and uh, loom weights. Um, and in terms of conical cups, again, to give you some ideas of quantities, um, we have hundreds rather than thousands of examples. Uh, and we have about um, 20 uh, loom weights. You can compare this, for example, with Agia Irini on Kea, where 4,000 conical cups were found just uh, in one room. At Yasos, probably, we have a couple of hundred conical cups, if that. Uh, we also have a few scuttles, a few minoan lumps, uh, possibly a, a spit rest. I haven't had, I don't, I, that hasn't been analyzed. It could be local or it could be from um, the Bodrum area. Sometimes uh, some of the finds from Yassos and some of the finds from the uh, Bodrum area cannot be told apart microscopically if, um, because some of the inclusions are just um, too small. You have to have uh, thin sections. Um, and as I said, apart from this local Minoan production, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have evidence of some hybrids. Uh, they are very, very rare. Uh, we have only a couple, but here is uh, the best uh, preserved. Um, this, um, the fabric is uh, typically of um, uh, Yassos. The biconical, this kind of biconical carination, again, it's a typical um, Anatolian shape, but of course it has this lovely foliate band around the neck, which is very, very minor. So just one decorative element, but everything else, the fabric, the um, shape of the vase, the technology of which is made, it's all Anatolian or certainly not out of uh, very much at home in uh, Anatolian sites. As I mentioned earlier, in addition uh, from Kos, from Bodrum, uh, we have imports of the pottery that it's, uh, well, not exactly Minoan, but shows clear evidence of some kind of Minoan influence. Perhaps could also that this be considered a kind of 
hybrid, some kind of koan <laughs> minorizing, uh, if you like. And this is the pottery that was described by Levi and Maviosa as Camares, but in fact it's neopalatial in date and it's a local production, of course, and possibly again in other uh, production centers in the Kos Bodrum region. Now, so far I have published uh, in total 52 fragments of this ware from Yassus. And we can compare this. Uh, to the 32 fragments of input from Crete. But in fact, it's not the right comparison because the 32 fragments of um, Cretan pottery found at Yassos is all that was imported from Crete in the sample that we looked at. While a fragment of this kind of pottery, it's basically found in any zembil, in every basket of pottery uh, from Yassos. So we are really dealing with another order of magnitudes when we compare these kind of fragments to the Minoan material. In this slide, I'm showing you some of the um, inputs from Rhodes. Um, and as you can see, um, we have inputs that are clearly Minoanizing. This is a very fine um, fragment from the neck of a jug decorated with spirals and with white dotted uh, bands, very, very LM1, very, uh, very minor, but the clay is from, um, indicates a Rhodian uh, provenance. And then we have this handmade uh, pottery that looks some kind of uh, uh, local production. I wouldn't call this very minorizing. So. And um, this um, in this slide, I'm showing you some of uh, one input from uh, uh, Miletus of Anatolian type pottery. Um, again, it's not uh, very clear. I mean, the, what is very clear for anybody who has had the uh, fortune of looking at the pottery from Miletus is that kind of fabric. It's unmistakable. It's uh, from uh, that area. But you might just see here vague traces of the red wash of the red. Thing. And what is this is a um, carinated, uh, it's a local Anatolian shape, a carinated. Um, large uh, cup. And what you have on the right is again pottery um, of typical um, Anatolian uh, tradition, uh, some of which could have, uh, was made locally, some of which was imported from Kos. And then, as I mentioned, this was a bit of a surprise, but we found also some pottery, uh, if you like to muddle our Minoan waters a bit, um, we found what appears to be local imitations of cycladic material and also uh, what seems to be an import of this kind of cycladic type pottery but made again in the Kos Bodrum region because of the type of um, temper used. This material is of course quite rare. We have found so far only in the region of three or four fragments. But I think it is significant uh, since there isn't much evidence as far as I know, but correct me if, if I'm wrong, of much evidence of imitation or local production of cycladic pottery in the Aegean. It's a certain in this part of the world in the neopalatial Period. So this would indicate, if you like, that not all the emulation processes involved Crete. So, and I think to move towards the final part uh, of my talk and my conclusions, what does this material tell us about Yasus and Crete? Uh, what does it tell us about Yassos and other Aegean regions, and more generally about uh, minoanization? Now, concerning what happened in the Middle Bronze Age, 
and uh, more specifically in the period of the old palaces on Crete. I think this is really anybody's guess. But on the basis of the scant evidence that we found at the moment, I would suggest that after perhaps a period of abandonment in the later early Bronze Age, or if not abandonment of limited occupation, we might have a refoundation or a uh, renaissance at Yassos which witnessed some contact with protopalatial Crete, as shown by some pottery that imported from the Messera uh, and some of the pottery uh, imported uh, the single fragment from the Messera and the other two fragments that could date also as late as MM3 from north central Crete. But it is certainly, I would say, impossible on the basis of three shirts to talk about Minoan people living at Yassos in this period <coughs> or of Minoan colonizing the site. The evidence is just too limited. In the Neopalatial period, we see a clear intensification of contacts between Yassos and Crete, and also between Yassos and other regions of the south and southeast Aegean. And I really mean the South and Southeast Aegean only because the evidence of contact between Yassos and areas north of Miletus, or generally north of the Neander Valley uh, and north of the Cyclades, is very, very meager indeed. We may have one or two shells. And in this period, I believe we also have evidence for movements of people, or I should say evidence for the movement of craftsmen trained in a Minoan tradition. The, these craftsmen may have been either from Crete itself or from other closer, heavily Minoanized <coughs> centers, such as Miletus or Serraglio on Cross. I don't think we can really tell. And how important, numerically or otherwise, these Minoans may have been at Yassos, of course, it's also very difficult to say. But we can say that at least that they were living and working side by side with people, artisans, trained in local Anatolian and Southeast Aegean traditions. But why do we have Minoan craftsmen at Yassos? Of course, a proper answer to this question cannot be based on the material from Yassos alone. But I think the patterns and quantities of ceramic imports at Yassos perhaps may tell us something about certain networks of interactions and how minorization may have spread, and perhaps something more generally about, if you like, the logistics of minorization. And perhaps the pottery from Yassos may tell us something about hegemonic and resistant strategies. Now, I don't wish to diminish the uh, role of Crete, and in particular of uh, Cretan elites, uh, in any ways, uh, in terms of stimulating uh, exchanges and affiliation networks in the Aegean, perhaps for their search for metals and exotica. But at the same time, I think that the uh, quantities and types of imports and the um, locally produced pottery at Yassos suggest the existence and importance of smaller and possibly independent exchange and affiliation networks. It is obvious from what I've shown you today that most of the ceramic imports involve pottery manufactured by near neighbors, Kos in particular, since the Southeast Aegean, light and dark, and dark on light represent the vast majority of imported material at Yassos. And at Yassos, we have Minoan imports, but we also have Minoanizing and Anatolian type imports. And yes, we have locally made Minoanizing pottery and Minoan Anatolian hybrids. But what about the cycladic type material? Are my conical cups symbols of Minoan hegemony, of Minoan globalization, and my cycladic type of pottery a symbol of resistance? And I apologize to Gramsci and fans of uh, uh, Gramsci for this very slack, for this very loose 
use, if you like, of this term is a bit tongue in cheek, of course. It seems to me that perhaps in the past the rush to demonstrate the Mainwan presence outside Crete and also the application of world system theory to ancient prehistoric data have focused scholarly attention towards long distance directional trade and arterial routes, the famous dendritic networks, and these at the expenses of smaller, more local exchange networks. In the Aegean in particular, like the relative absence of substantial evidence of cycladic imports in the southeast Aegean and vice versa led some scholars in the past to suggest that there was no direct link between the Cyclades and the Southeast Aegean, and that these few, the few imports that were found there uh, had reached their destinations via Crete. But I think more evidence of possible Cycladic, Dodecanesian, Anatolian crosslinks and smaller scale exchange systems is now emerging. And I think some of the material from Jansos I showed you today clearly suggests this, in my opinion. It's, that is the existence of small world exchange and affiliation systems. That is the so-called small world phenomenon, also known as six degrees of separation. And using the small world model, one could suggest that certain <coughs> sites that show a more limited degree of minorization, such as Yasos, could be interpreted as nodes that have direct links with a relatively limited number of other nearby sites, nodes, and yet they are connected to the wider Aegean world, and with Crete in particular, because <coughs> some of these nearby sites or nodes are like hubs with more connectivity and with more direct links with Crete and other areas. And I think areas or Aegean hubs with more connectivity could be sites such as Serralion Kos or Miletus, uh, which are located on very important uh, sea routes and also inland routes, Miletus, of course, with the Meander Valley. But, and it's these hubs that in turn help to link more provincial sites located in more remote areas, such as Yasos, they help link them with the Minoan world and the wider Aegean. This doesn't mean, of course, that the notion of high commerce, of directional trade, of major arterial routes should be dismissed, um, especially since they actually, I think, provide better models to explain certain distribution patterns and why some sites appear to be more minoranized than others. But major dendritic routes do not <coughs> explain everything. At least that's what I think. I think um, and perhaps the most important thing is that I don't see these dendritic major arterial routes and small world networks to be incompatible with each other. In fact, they're not mutually exclusive. They can work at nested levels. And finally, I also tried to show you that in this paper that not the, all the emulation strategies went the Minoan way. King Minos may have ruled the Aegean waves, but he didn't rule all of them. And some people in the Cyclades, in the Dodecanese, and in the western coast of Asia Minor like to stir the waters in the supposedly Minoan Mare Nostrum. <laughs> Thank you. Τις ερωτήσεις σε αυτό το κομμάτι το όχι όταν ελαμβάνει το Σουηδικό Ινστιτούτο, αλλά ούτε ο Άρτο, ο Καϊντινέν, ο Διευθυντής του Σουηδικού, ούτε η Υποδιευθύντρια μπορούσε να είναι σήμερα. Αν και ήθελαν πάρα πολύ να περιβρίσκονται, οπότε τον αλάβω εγώ για πρώτη φορά, θα έλεγα. So, if you would like to pose some questions to, to the speaker. Ο κύριος Πουλώτης. 
Όχι questions, περισσότερο remarks και λιγότερο questions. Ε, από ό,τι κατάλαβα, με συγχωρείτε ότι θα μιλήσω λίγο τώρα, δηλαδή θα μιλάω σιγά αργά. Από ό,τι κατάλαβα, η, ο οικισμό τη θυσία σου είναι ουσιαστικά ένα οικισμό του οποίου τουλάχιστον η κεραμική στο μεγαλύτερο μέρο τη παρουσιάζει ανατολικά, δηλαδή είναι ένα οικισμό με κεραμική ανατολικού τύπου, όπως συμβαίνει και βορειότερα και στο Τσεσμέ και στη Λίμνο και στην Πολιόχνη και στο Κουκονίσι και τα λοιπά. Άρα όλα αυτά τα στοιχεία, όλα αυτά τα imports είναι συγκριτικά πάρα πολύ λίγα ε, σε σύγκριση με την τόπια κεραμική η οποία από την κατάλαβα είναι τυπική ε, αυτά τα Red Slip Wear και τα λοιπά. Ε, εγώ θα ήθελα, ε, αυτό που θα με ενδιαφέρε περισσότερο να έβλεπα, περισσότερο και από τα καθαρά τα imports που μας δείξατε, που πραγματικά φαίνεται να είναι, αν όχι πνοσιακά, αλλά από την περιοχή της Κνοσού, αυτά τα fine με, τα, με τις πύρες ε, και τα λοιπά, ε, ποια είναι τα κούκι, τα, τα everyday cooking, lamps, brasiers, ε, αυτά σε τι βαθμό είναι μηνοϊκά ή μηνοίζοντα. Πολύ λίγα είναι μηνοϊκά, πάρα πολύ λίγα, πάρα πολύ λίγα. Όχι, δεν μιλάω για τα πέντε. Μιλάμε για δύο-τρία ε, πράγματα, δηλαδή δύο-τρία όστρακα. Όλα μαζί. Όχι, όχι, όχι. Δεν μιλάω για την painted ceramic, την clearly imported, ναι, 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 ναι. αλλά για τα lamps ε, ε, μηνοϊκού τύπου, όπως έχετε, ας πούμε, έχετε περίπου, μας είπατε, 100 conical cups. Ναι, 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 ναι. ναι. έχετε και long weights, είναι... 20 long weights. Ναι. Αυτά είναι ενδεικτικά. Ναι. Θέλω να πω, ε, 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 everyday life pottery, Of, uh, of, Cre Cre of Cretan types, ναι. of Cretan inspiration, ναι, ναι, ναι. as lamps, uh, ναι. brassiers and all. Ναι. Uh, we have several, many, είναι πολλά. 20 υφαντικά βάρη. Όχι, αυτό το άκουσα. Ναι, εικονικά κύπελα. Από 100. Εκα... Α, περίπου 100. Και lamps. Και λάμψ τρία. Τρία, 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 τρία. Ναι, 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 σας είπα, είναι πολύ λίγα, είναι πολύ λίγα. Τα λάμψ είναι φτιαγμένα, δεν είναι εισαγωμένα. Είναι εντόπια. Είναι εντόπια. Ναι, άρα το θέμα της colonization είναι πολύ weak, πολύ αδύναμο. Ναι, συμφωνώ. Γιατί μπορεί να μιλήσουμε για για a certain degree of minimization, but not uh, for a Cretan, for a Cretan, for a minoan uh, colony. Yeah. Ναι, Is συμφωνώ. Ακριβώς, ναι. 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 αλλήμωνο, αλλήμωνο, αυτό. Ναι, 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 ναι. <laughs> Εγώ συμφωνώ με αυτό. <laughs> ε, δηλαδή δεν λέω πως δεν έχουμε <laughs> τίποτα <laughs> μηνοϊκό. <laughs> δεν λέω πως δεν έχουμε τίποτα. Τίποτα μηνοϊκό, κάτι έχουμε και αυτό είναι σημαντικό, αλλά δεν είναι όπω σε άλλα μέρη, δεν είναι όπω η Αγία Ειρήνη, δεν είναι όπω ο δεν είναι όπω τα κρωτήρι. Είναι η ποσότητα, είναι κάτι εντελώ διαφορετικό. Και αυτό που μου κάνει εντύπωση είναι όταν έχουμε εισαγωγμένα και από το Μιλίτο. Uh, είναι, δεν είναι μόνο μηνοϊκά, έχει και ανατολικά. Άρα Για μένα είναι πιο σημαντικό. Ενισχύεται αυτό το σχήμα που λέμε οι περισσότεροι ότι υπάρχει μια degradation ναι. several degrees of minimization. Ναι, ναι. Εγώ σκέφτομαι ότι ο, 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 ο Βόλφ ε, 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 στη Μαλίθο δεν θέλανε τα ανατολικά και τα στείλανε στο Ιλιάσο. <laughs> <laughs> Αυτά είναι... <laughs> Δεν τα θέλανε, δεν είναι. Συγγνώμη. Okay, um, I just wanted to know if the 
Minoan imports were concentrated together or they distributed throughout? Or, well, I mean, is there any any localization pattern. of the imports within the site? Well, Excuse I can me. show you if I go back to my map of the West. Oops, there. Okay, here there is one building that is almost square. Uh, the, the building that, according to Belli and other people, has some minor features, and you could say that there is some concentration of minor material there. Having said that, in this entire area, there are only three buildings of which that have been excavated properly, well, properly, where they have exposed a large area. One, and that, the one that has been exposed uh, completely is the one that has most minor material. But is this, the other ones, we have little corners here and there. Um, and there are conical cups, there are room weights also in the other side, in the other sides. It's not just concentrated in this building. I wish I could say yes, but I think um, also, I, I wouldn't, uh, that building is the only one where there is a bit more stratigraphy for the Bronze Age, where mm -hmm. even with the old excavations you could find <coughs> a few more strata, also where there were a couple of patches where they actually found material still in situ. Uh, the other uh, two buildings were, forgive my French, buggered up so much <laughs> by the geometric and later area that is, uh, and they were also excavated so badly. Um, but there too, th we had a few, there, there are a few loom weights. It's not just one building. Uh, even in the other buildings that had a slightly more, less minor architecture, even they had mm -hmm. some conical cups, some loom weights. Nicoletta, thank you for such an interesting paper. <laughs> Cycladic resistance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we travel to Southeast with you. Um, I would like to ask if there is any comparison made, I mean systematically made, between the source material and my litus material. Uh, because there are differences. Yes, of course. I understand. It's My lithus is much more minor and It's honest. very different. <coughs> and this but is what is interesting. Yeah. This might be very interesting because yes. yeah. we might uh, I couldn't agree understand more. in this way I mean, the structures there and what's happening actually. Yeah. I think that, that is what is interesting and that is why I think Yasos is part yeah. of a different kind of uh, network, and, but, but perhaps, uh, you know, we, we try to compare as much as possible, even doing things that we were not supposed to do, <laughs> like taking shirts from one side to the other to compare them, with the permission of the representatives of the Turkish government. Okay, just me, my idea. Not only a theorem drug, it's a theorem drug, but also some uh, pieces from, I think, from... Uh, uh, um, or Milos, yeah, the Lacopi, and but not not many of them. We have also the southeast Aegean, but also not many. And more than but more than ninety percent, I would estimate, of the pottery is my known and imported from Crete. And we have Barbara has drawn about <laughs> eleven files of this. We didn't count the, <laughs> the pottery yet, but it's uh, it's a lot. And uh, it starts uh, in the Middle Bronze Age. By the way, now also in Samos, yeah. with Urania Kukas excavation, yeah. we have context yeah. to, to Middle Minoan and Crete. More even in uh, Miletus, where we have, yeah. I think, and about 150 come on. shirts of true Kamaras. Yes, I, 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 I've seen, seen them. I've seen them yeah. with you, yeah, yeah. and I've seen them in Tafshan Adasir, yeah, yeah, yeah. in Didyma. Yeah, yeah. And, it and is also, real Kamaras yeah, there. And, and then decorated pottery yeah. from all areas of Crete, Kalanepetit petrography is from Knossos, from Mesara, from Eastern and from Western Crete. Yeah. And, but all the, and, 
all the domestic pottery, uh, Christos asked for the domestic pottery, also there, more than 90%, or 98, I would say, are my known types, conical cups, uh, cooking pots, all the, we have all the assemblage, and very few, little, therefore I was surprised that you have a, an Anatolian <laughs> type my lead, from, it's my lead, we have some, but very little, yeah. And we have some hybrids too, mixtures between, yeah. but, but, uh, so uh, it's the, the general picture is of a general minor, generally minor settlement in Miletus. Not to forget uh, the linear A, we are just now publishing uh, about uh, 15 inscriptions. We have wall, wall paintings, uh, evidence from my known cult, uh, the sanctuary with my known cult vessels, and so yeah, that's a complete different picture, and, and Marisa is right, and, and this is astonishing. How many kilometers are between us? 30, perhaps? Yeah, Something like that. You, you could walk. You could walk, yeah, yeah. In less than a, yeah, yeah. Less than a day. From yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is why, you know, you can't say that simply because something is in one area, no. is, uh, you, you have to expect exactly the same things. In a sense, to me, this makes it more interesting. It's more yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, not I agree less with your interesting. small world system that, that I say my leap is was perhaps a point of yeah. contact and then my known things were distributed from there in the area. Yeah. And, and I, I think also Seraglio must have yeah, been uh, 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 quite important. Sorry, just to say something about that. Uh, uh, that I think that uh, Miletus is mentioned as a Minon colony in uh, ancient text, uh, yes. but do we, do you know the ancient, uh, the prehistoric uh, name of uh, Iasos? No. Yeah. Well, is it a, uh, is it the prehistoric or is it the, the classical uh, name? Because uh, it is, it is the Greek name. It is uh, because at some point mm. you, you have that becomes you know in the late geometric period mm. that becomes uh, uh, Greek. And, we, and in later periods, in, you know, in the um, archaic, uh, classical, period, Hellenistic period, you have inscriptions, and the name is Yasos. It's the Greek name. Um, but in the prehistoric period, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's different. Kyria Labesi. The synergia of Herodes is to Nectario. Jesus... Θα ήταν, θα μπορούσα να, με, να λύσουμε το πρόβλημα έντονε, επί, μεγαλύτερες επιδράσεις, ξέρω εγώ, στη μίλη, το λιγότερες αυτά, μελετώντας την τοπική παραγωγή, ξεκινώντας από τον δέκτη, γιατί μιλάμε για επιδράσεις, αλλά ποτέ δεν κοιτάμε τι δυνατότητες είχε ο δέκτης αυτών των επιδράσεων. Ε, γιατί είναι, νομίζω ότι και από το τόπο και από την εποχή είναι μία αλληλένωτη σχέση ανάμεσα σε αυτόν που ασκεί την επίδραση, το πιο δυναμικό στοιχείο και τον αποδέκτη του. Εκεί θα φανεί αν δέχεται περισσότερες, αν μπορεί να φομοιώσει αν έχει τοπική παραγωγή καλύτερης ποιότητας από το άλλο. Γι' αυτό σημασία νομίζω έχει για να βγάλουμε ένα συμπέρασμα και η, τοπική, η μελέτη της τοπικής κεραμικής ή των δυνατοτήτων. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Μα και εμείς κάναμε αυτό. <laughs> δηλαδή, <laughs> δεν, εγώ, αφού είμαστε, ήθελα να μιλήσω για το minorization, έδειξα τα εισαγωγά, αλλά... Στην δημοσίευση, στην μελέτη, μελετήσαμε και τα ανατολικά, γιατί αυτά είναι τα πιο, μελα... τα πιο πολλά. Mm -hmm. uh, το μόνο πρόβλημα είναι ότι, uh, mm -hmm. γιατί, uh, αυτό εγώ λυπάμαι, ότι uh, uh, ήταν πάρα πολύ δύσκολο να μελετήσουμε αυτό το υλικό, γιατί mm -hmm. δεν έχει καλή στρωματογραφία. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Αυτό είναι. Και δεν, δεν αξίζει να. Mm -hmm. Δηλαδή, κάναμε όσοι μελέτη μπορούσαμε, αλλά αν δεν έχει καλή σχηματογραφία και uh, δεν έχει άλλα 
di Nozif Mela, con va, ma non è disco. Allora, i piotti te li ho detto? Poi c'è una poeta che parla così, non è disco. E la su? Non è. E tu pichi? E tu pichi, io non ti dico, io ti metto... E ne è che si su, vena mi chi me ti smilli tu. Έχει πολύ, έχει, αλμιάζει πάρα πολύ, είναι μια λίγη που έχει, ναι, αλλά, είναι μια λίγη που έχει. Ε, ακριβώς, αυτό, αυτή η σχέση είναι πιο πολύ που ενδιαφέρει, δηλαδή ένα, μια ανατολική θέση, χωρίς πολλές προοπτικές ανάπτυξης και επικοινωνίες και ανταλλαγών, γιατί πρέπει να υπάρχουν και ανταλλαγές. Ε, τι μπορεί να δεχτεί. Λίγα πράγματα θα δεχτεί. Ο κύριος Μπρόκαν. Νικολέτα, I was going to ask the, not to get away from this conversation, from the Cretan perspective, because you showed the map and you showed the, the lines and you asked the question, why aren't we finding any of these things back on Crete? And I think at least from the Moklos perspective, and now from Papadokoulos, we are starting to find a lot more of those light on dark jars. So for instance, but these are mostly El Aegean. Southeast Aegean. And we always say Kos, but I know there are several, at least a couple sites. So for instance, from and these are mostly LM1B levels. That's just because most of the time we're looking at LM1B deposits. We have really small LM1A deposits. Um, but you know, we're talking numbers of 40 at Moklos five or six at Papadiokombos. And so I would be asked Lefterius or Methaxia, I don't know what they're finding at Patras and Zakra, you don't. So I think when, we've, when, the, when we look at them more carefully, we'll see that there are certain ports that are more connected than others, which will be interesting. And Moklos will always be the star. But, uh, in, but I think you'll find more. We're finding biconical jars. We have central Anatolian things. So you're, there's more of it. We just haven't been looking. I yeah, I, well, this is... I, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that because I'm very happy to change my mind about, you about this. The same thing to yeah. Well, no, <laughs> Macari. <laughs> no, I mean, I remember asking years ago, asking Lefteris if he had found some Southeast Aegean in um, uh, Zacro. And I remember asking uh, Sandy McGillivray if he had found some Southeast Aegean at uh, Palencastro. And they both said no, and the Southeast Aegean is so easy to spot. Yeah, it's easy, 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 easy. Uh, the real question for me is how on earth Levi and Laviosa could think that yeah. it was Camaris. That for me is the real question. Yeah. And especially Doro Levi and why? Because Morricone in 1972 published the material from Serrano. Yeah. And that is that is the, the relay. Sorry, I'm, I'm changing the subject. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to hear this because, as I said, I mean, my idea that it's all circulated via Knossos, it's on the basis of what I knew I, I, until a couple of years ago. But if people are bringing up Anatolian material, Southeast Aegean, in other areas of Crete, great. But there's all one thing. Yeah, but uh, that's because that's what you were digging. You will f I'm sure that, um, I, I don't know, perhaps you will find even more if you go down. Um, because, so, well, certainly at Yasos, we have only possibly one level that could be LM1B. And I say this because it's a level with conical cups, uh, minor pottery, um, and it's found on top of the tephra. But if it is one week after the tephra, is that LM1B? <laughs> you know, that's the problem. And if you, can, if you can tell me the difference from LM1A and LM1B conical cups at Yasos, I'll kiss you because <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't tell the difference, I'm afraid, from what Le, we have. Λοιπόν, θα πρέπει να σταματήσουμε εδώ γιατί έχει πάει ήδη 9.30 περίπου. Οπότε, σε ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ, Νικολέτα. Ίσως το Ανατόριαν κομμάτι να το κάνει σε μια άλλη διάλεξη. Λοιπόν, στον επόμενο μήνα από την Ιασό θα πάμε στη Λέσβο με την κυρία Φιλανιώτου, οπότε ίσως θα ακούσουμε τις σχέσεις μάλλον. 
Λοιπόν, σας ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Έχουμε ένα κρασάκι για μετά. Οπότε, σας ευχαριστούμε πολύ.